In a world where wisdom was wealth and knowledge was power, Alexandria stood as a beacon. Its great library was the jewel of the ancient world, a testament to the intellectual achievements of humanity. That is, of course, until its tragic destruction in 48 BC. So the story goes. In reality, while the library did suffer on that fateful day, it did not vanish then. It persisted, a shadow of its former glory. Fast forward a few centuries, and the main library had finally suffered one too many catastrophes to remain standing. But its daughter library, in the Serapeum, continued to shine as a hub of intellectual pursuit. This was the backdrop against which a prodigious intellect, Hypatia, would rise and mark her place in history. Hypatia's lineage was deeply rooted in scholarship. Her father, Theon, wasn't just any mathematician, but a luminary of his time. Recognizing the spark of brilliance in his daughter, Theon didn't just pass down his knowledge, but fostered a hunger for learning in her. From the earliest days, Hypatia's world was filled with the rhythm of poetic verses and the logic of mathematical equations. He also took pride in teaching her a pure Platinian Neoplatonism, a version of Platonic philosophy, just as he did with his other students at the prestigious school he led. Under his guidance, Hypatia didn't just learn, she thrived. As the proverb goes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Hypatia, with her father's foundation and her own relentless dedication, emerged as a figure of repute. At a time when women's voices in academia were often stifled, she defied conventions. Hypatia was not just heard, she commanded respect. Her lectures, in which she echoed her father's philosophical teachings, attracted students from all across the Mediterranean. One of her most prominent pupils was Synesius of Cyrene, whose extant letters to Hypatia are our main sources of information about her career. While her teachings have earned a place in history in their own right, it is her writings that have garnered the most intrigue, not least in part due to how little is known about them for certain. Just as the great library's vast collections had faced oblivion centuries before, so did much of Hypatia's original works. The annals of history riddled with gaps, leave us grasping at echoes of her genius. Mirroring her father's greatest achievement of editing Euclid's Elements, a cornerstone in the world of geometry, we know that Hypatia delved deep into Ptolemy's Almagest, refining and adding her insights, including an improved method of long division needed for astronomical computation. Her touch on Diophantus's Arithmetica, bringing new dimensions to the seminal work on algebra, is more contested, however. The 13 original books, only six survive in Greek. At least another four survive to be translated in Arabic around 860 AD. And most interestingly, the Arabic text seems to be an expanded version of the originals, with the most likely candidate for the additional material being Hypatia due to a stylistic similarity to the explanatory interpolations featured in her edition of Almagest. She also supposedly wrote a commentary on Apollonius's work on conics, as well as an astronomical canon and an edition of Archimedes's measurement of a circle. However, these works are no longer extant, which is especially unfortunate given that these commentaries would have been concrete proof of her high mathematical caliber, as her surviving work on Almagest and Arithmetica is widely regarded as relatively trivial. Her status as a leading mathematician of her time is not in question, for the true extent of her genius is simply lost to time. How could this happen, though, that a seemingly large chunk 
of mathematical innovation could just vanish. Well, from 382 AD, the streets of Alexandria were changing. Political and religious winds shifted, leading Hypatia into a storm she couldn't escape. Theophilus of Alexandria, who was militantly opposed to Lamlichian Neoplatonism, had the Serapeum demolished, which, if you'll recall from the introduction, was the great library's inheritor. It's unlikely that this event specifically caused her works to be lost, especially given that it housed very few scrolls at the time, but it definitely set the stage for what was to come. In fact, it was Theophilus's successor, Cyril, whose inexperience and religious intolerance would lead to her downfall. Though Hypatia had avoided previous stages of the civil strife surrounding Cyril, she inevitably became embroiled in a struggle between Alexandria's prefect, Orestes, who frequently consulted the wise Hypatia for advice, and Cyril, who believed Hypatia to be a danger to his political ambitions. In a brutal act that shook the city, Hypatia met her end. A martyr to knowledge, victim to ignorance. She had been murdered by a mob of Christians, widely believed to have been ordered by Cyril. And even if he had not directly ordered it himself, his smear campaign against her, supposing her to be a Satanist, had inspired it. There's some suggestion that her works could have been intentionally destroyed alongside the murder, but there's just as much evidence to suggest that her work simply disintegrated from neglect after having not appointed a successor, unlike many other philosophers. For millennia, the legacy of Hypatia has not been one of her own. She has been used to further anti-Catholic sentiment, to fuel romantic movements, and as a symbol for causes that were not necessarily hers. Her work, though, forever changed academia, with her students carrying her philosophical torch across the Mediterranean and whispers of her edits surviving without attribution through centuries of translations. In the annals of history, she stands as a testament to the power of knowledge and the importance of preserving it for generations to come. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for what other lost treasures from history I could delve into next, please leave those down in the comments section below.